A few months ago, a gentleman named Don contacted me and told me he had developed a mortising jig and would send me one to use, no strings attached. I was immediately interested and even more so after seeing the documentation and sample work he sent to me. After getting the jig, I intended to wait for a project that warranted its use. A few months went by and Jay Bates released a video showing off the jig. That video nudged me to get out the Mortise Master and give it a try. In this video, all I'm making are two simple picture frames. They both come from a leftover 8 quarter cherry stick and are about 7 eighths of an inch thick. One frame will be a rail and style design to show off how this jig could help with frame construction, while the other will be a mitered frame to show off how this jig can handle non 90 degree work pieces. After getting my stock milled and cut to dimension, I dove right into routing mortises. I didn't do any test cuts on the other material and luckily didn't make any crazy mistakes. The workpiece is held in place between two wooden jaws and lined up to a center line. The jaws have a lip at the top so that the workpiece can sit firm in the right spot every time. The router has a 1 inch guide bushing that slips into the slide plate which in turn slides in two aluminum channels. The slide plate has a series of holes that correspond to varying offset options for the mortise location. I have it set up to auto center on any thickness material. Lastly, there are two stops that control how far forwards and back the router moves, which determines the mortise width. I'm using a quarter inch spiral bit to route the mortise, which will be about a half inch deep and an inch or so wide. One of the good things about loose tenons is that you can route them oversized or make your tenon stop undersized so that there is a bit of wiggle room when gluing the joint together. When routing the mitered pieces, I took extra care to make sure the face of the miter was fully seated against the lip of the jaws. I used a quick grip clamp to hold all of the pieces in place and it seemed to work well. After a few mortises, you sort of get into a groove and it made me think using this to batch out items wouldn't be too bad. Even though there's an auto center feature, I still kept the same face of each workpiece against the front jaw. For the mitered pieces, that meant I had to flip the jig around for half of the mortises. I think during this movement, I misaligned something which caused those mortises to be ever so slightly off-centered. And for now, I've chalked it up to operator error, as most mistakes are. Off-camera, I milled up some tenon stock to fit snugly in the mortises. I gave both frames a dry fit, and they are both pretty good. As I mentioned before, the mitered frame had some small issues which resulted in a little lip but that was easily sanded flat later. The other frame was much better. The glue up was pretty straightforward. Lately I've been using Type Bond Clear for no real reason in this case but in general it's great for gluing up light colored woods. The butt joints got a few parallel clamps while the mitered frame got a band clamp to draw the joints shut. After the glue dried, I sanded the frames up to 220 and added light chamfers on all of the edges. This really lightens the look of the frame while still keeping a sharp profile. I also added a rabbit to hold the glass, matting, and photos. I'm very eager to get a router table so I don't have to do things like this, but it worked out okay. Off camera, I squared up the corners of the rabbits, and here I'm squaring the chamfers where the router bit couldn't reach. The finish I'm applying is Osmo Top Oil 3045 Satin. I believe it's their food safe finish, which doesn't matter in this case, but I had it from a previous project and it leaves a very smooth texture. I apply it with a white abrasive pad, let sit for a little, then buff completely dry with a blue shop towel. Two coats gave great results. I took the frames to my local frame shop to get the glass, matting, and photos installed. I put them on our big frame wall for the purposes of this shot, but one will be going to my parents and the other to my wife's parents. 
and as you can see, I had a great time avoiding glare with all of these frames in the shot. I'm pretty happy with how these frames turned out, though frames like these don't necessarily need the strength of a loose tenon, the process shown can be used on various projects to reinforce joints. The Mortise Master is very well made and fun to use. I can definitely see it finding ways into my projects moving forward. I'll leave a link to the Mortise Master website in the description if you're curious about buying one or just seeing more information about it. Again, this was a no strings attached demo. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.